interesting stories, interesting people. Welcome to the Humble Badger Podcast. Thank you for listening to this podcast today. Follow us at The Humble Badger on Twitter and Facebook or at The Humble Badger Podcast on Instagram. This episode is brought to you with the help of our promotional partners at The Studio Paint Bar, Mississauga's first and only premium paint and wine bar. Find out more at studiopaintbar.ca. My name is Pablo Dawson. I'm an event host, a dramedian, and I am the host for this episode of the Humble Badger podcast. And as you know, we always start off with something a little bit wacky, a little bit weird. Um, And I don't know how weird or wacky this is, but uh, another W word I will use, my wife. Uh, So when I first met my wife, she talked about her sort of favorite celebrities. And uh, uh, one of them, I was just like, really? And that was Sylvester Stallone. And then the other one that she mentioned was uh, Brian Adams, who I could really understand because I am also a huge fan of Brian Adams. I love that song, The Summer of 69. I was nowhere around in the summer of 69, but uh, for me, the summer of 96 was uh, was quite golden. And uh, I'd like to know what my co-host thinks about Brian Adams. The summer of 69. Hey there, Pablo. My name is Melissa Manish International. And remember, guys. I am so happy to be a co-host. Pablo, thank you so much. Well, for sure. We're happy to have you on. Absolutely. I think it's going to be fitting. I'll be uh, adding to the roster of our interview today. I am a salsa coach, confidence coach, best-selling author, and international speaker at and, your service. And what do you think about Brian Adams? Oh, I love Brian Adams. Can you turn me on in any other way through music? <laughs> click, click. <laughs> oh, it's not that kind of show yet. But okay, Hey-o. there we go. All right. And I'd like to know what my special guest thinks about that. Thank you so much, Pablo. My name is Bjerz Miuski. I'm a classical violinist here in Mississauga. I am also a composer and I am an inventor of things, if you can believe that. Mm-hmm. I am also a professional opera singer and I was originally from Thunder Bay, Ontario, mm-hmm. but found my home here in Mississauga for 17 years. So I'm excited to be here today. And, and we're excited to have you on. Thank you. <laughs> and to answer the question about Brian Adams, I was fortunate enough to work with him on oh. CTV's The Launch. And I can honestly say that I had, um, I didn't know how musically inclined he was until mm-hmm. I was able to share the stage with him and realize that his ear is so in tune with everything that is going on around him that he's able to point to an instrument and literally change one note in order mm-hmm. for it to sound better. So um, that was a unique wow. experience for that, me. That sounds very interesting. And you got the chance to work with him. What is your favorite Brian Adams song? Oh, <laughs> this goes back to, to high school dances uh-huh. where it was... Um, I think it's heaven. Definitely. Yes, that is a fabulous song. It was like the grade six dancing where my hands are like on the shoulders. Yeah, the yeah, yeah. And it's like the boy. Has his no, hands. I, 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 um, that was the first uh, Brian Adams song I sang to my wife, and uh, somehow she still stayed with me. So <laughs> it was good. Oh, wow. It was good. <laughs> <laughs> Oh. Uh, well, that's so beautiful. I mean, that takes a lot of confidence to work with someone like Brian Adams. Mm-hmm. What was that experience like for you? Well, it was interesting, the whole story behind it, because um, I was working with Orrin Isaacs. Well, I wasn't working with him, but I had randomly emailed him five years ago. <laughs> and I said, I am a classical violinist in Mississauga. Should any opportunity arise where you need a violinist, let me know. So it took five years for him to reply to that email. And he said, can you make yourself available on Wednesday? Because you need to come to CTV to work with me on the launch. So I just thought this was an amazing opportunity that was five years in the making. So I'm glad that I sent that email when I did. After five years, he got back to you and said, I need you Wednesday. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> and you know Zero what I hundreds. did? I snapped to that Wednesday. <laughs> yeah, but five years. I mean, I'd like to know what his email server is. I don't want to use that. <laughs> That's was, for sure. It's dial-up still. <laughs> it's dial-up, yeah. Summer exactly. of 69. Yeah. So Vera, um, you did mention that you're a classical violinist and a composer. So let's talk about that first. Uh, mm-hmm. you've, I, I assume you've played music all your life or is this something you got into later on in your life? I've been playing music. I keep my... Poor mother was in like labor and she <laughs> she actually birthed me holding the violin, I think. So That's I was an interesting choice for a I, hospital to allow that. I was yeah. actually two weeks overdue and probably for good reason because my there's an interesting story how I got into music. My mom is actually the daughter of an immigrant farmer from Winnipeg. Mm-hmm. And she really wanted to take 
uh, um, lessons, so piano lessons and singing lessons. But at that time, my grandfather, whatever he was making on the farm, he was putting back into his business. So unfortunately, she didn't take lessons at that time. Mm. When she was pregnant with me, she would be playing classical music all the time. She oh. was playing opera all the time. So even now, I feel that when I perform in the symphony, some mm. of the music I've never seen, never heard before, mm -hmm. but it seems familiar to me. So I think... So you almost feel like a musician at heart. Yes. <laughs> and from birth at from heart. Birth at heart. <laughs> Exactly. Musician at womb. It started like that, right? It started from the bottom. Now she's here. Yes, right. right. And I would love to know, I mean, what's the biggest misconception of being a musician? That we're all nerdy. <laughs> you think that's wait, a wait, you're not nerdy? What? Well, <laughs> Don't I, you like science? I like science. <laughs> I, I, I just, I think that there's a certain stigma associated with classical musicians that they're nerdy, they practice all the time, which don't get me wrong, we have well, to don't do that. They? <laughs> we do, we have to because of the, you know, the the music is very intense. And if yeah. you don't practice, depending on what you're playing, if you're playing a solo, you have to know your stuff because we're not auto-tuned. We can't right. fake our way on stage. I <laughs> wish that we could, but can't we can't. can't fake it till you make it. No, not in that no, sense. So. This podcast is going to be auto-tuned next season. <laughs> <laughs> Can they auto-tune my voice? Because people, people make fun of that. They, Why? Why do they make they, fun of your voice? They say that I sound like a Tickle Me Elmo doll. Well, that's because you're laughing all the time. Also, uh, Melissa, please stop tickling her right Don't now. And, uh, Sorry. Melissa's well, tickling me under the table. Uh, Live to where? <laughs> it wasn't me. It was the badger. Yeah, me. that's right. So, Vera, you also um, have mentioned that you are an inventor, which, uh, mm -hmm. frankly, forget musicians. A lot of people are not inventing anything, uh, except for some of my relatives. They invent lots of problems. Um, <laughs> what kind of stuff do you invent other than problems? So, currently, I am the, an inventor of a dental product. So, it is, it's been seven years in the making. There's, it's a long process where you have to go through patent applications mm -hmm. and patent approvals and meeting with the right team to design the product and then trying to manufacture the product, getting a grip on everything. So that's been a process, but yeah. that's also something that I do besides music. Oh, oh fantastic. Innovation, musician. Yes. Wow. Creativity. I would, I mean, hey, this is creativity to the next level, myself included, <laughs> Pablo included. Yeah. Now, I have a question. Mm -hmm. Have you heard the term starving artist? And let me ask you, if you have heard it, how do you feel about that? That's kind of like a touchy subject for me only because I, I didn't mean to touch you. No, Elmo. <laughs> Elmo, tickle me, Elmo. Anyone? Stop tickling her. I told you. <laughs> it's, it's different for all people, I think, in all genres. It's not like specific to one genre. There are a lot of artists that like I know of some of of my friends and colleagues that they've decided to quit their day job and mm -hmm. go fully into music, which is a very scary experience considering they did have a comfortable day job and decided mm -hmm. that they were going to quit that and go into uh, music full time. Mm -hmm. And it is scary because you're not seeing results right away. Right, right. And I actually had the same experience happen to me because I was in the corporate world for many years and mm -hmm. I decided to quit that. And I was busking in downtown Toronto for oh. many months. Oh, wow. And that was quite an experience being escorted away by security because I didn't have a permit at that time and I was not aware that even if you're going inside buildings that right. you are not allowed to play there no matter <laughs> no matter how great you're playing you just got escorted away so. yeah but I thought it was questionable that you chose to play the bongos while busking uh, instead of <laughs> In the London. violin which you're very good at I think that uh, that was a very strange choice the bongos were cutting it <laughs> yeah that's right um what I want to know is you obviously you're a very gifted musician but you do practice a lot you're mm -hmm. an inventor all these things that you're doing professionally, um, what do you do to unwind and relax? Uh, you work hard. Do you play hard as well? The thing is for me is that as a musician, it's very hard for your brain to relax mm -hmm. because at a time when it's even people ask me like, what do you do to unwind after a concert? You have no idea how much your brain is still going after a concert. Mm -hmm. Like I listened to your podcast with Mad Zaddy and I know that for him as well. Mm -hmm. I can imagine that after a show when him and Heather perform yeah, that their mind down, is like, yeah. yeah, it's hard for mm -hmm. you to calm down because you're yeah. thinking about your performance. You're thinking about your next performance, thinking about, you know, how you how you performed, actually. Yeah, so I think yeah. like it's it's you're never in a state of pure calmness. Not quite. Yeah. <laughs> no. It's almost like the stimulus is at such a high, high, high level stimulus. Yeah. And then you're just at a place of like extreme creativity. Yeah, yeah. So you're going right to the top of the spectrum. And mm -hmm. then it's like, how do you come down? But I think that's, I mean, you look phenomenal. The, our, our listeners can't quite see all the glow that comes They will see you. the pictures on the humblebadger.com. <laughs> Hashtag humble, that's right. the humble Badger <laughs> podcast. That's right. And I would love to know as well. I mean, 
being innovative, being a creative, mm -hmm. how do you personally balance? Good question. <laughs> well, she's got lots well, of good questions. Well, she came bearing <laughs> gifts as well. I mean, this is an amazing <laughs> guest. Like I, Brian Adams to personalized gifts. Love it. Yeah, she she brought us uh, some stuff, some swag uh, before the show. I told her that it gets hot in the studio, so she got us one of these, uh, which I can try and operate here. It's a vibrating <laughs> fan. It's a I'm fan. I'm a fan. <laughs> it's a fan. And I'm a fan of that, too, yes. There's a, it, 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 it always... <laughs> I don't know. I think everybody tries their best to balance. Does that really happen per se? I'm not really too sure because I'm also, um, I don't know if it's a blessing or a curse to, to have a conscience. So I tend, I tend to <laughs> it's worry. It's a curse. No, I tend to worry yeah. a lot. And like I'm being such a good person. No, I, I, but like, <laughs> I, I'm very much into my family and I'm still blessed that I have a 93 year old grandmother that's yes. still alive yeah. and I'm her personal caregiver. We'll so give her a I ding worry, for that. I worry about that as well. So it's not like I can just go home and like turn off the world and not have to worry about anything. Mm -hmm. So that's something that I'm working on to realize that I have to let go and I don't have control and I can do mm -hmm. my best and my best is appropriate at that yes. time. Oh, yeah. I think so many people can relate to that. Yeah, 100%. Yeah, well. And I think it's uh, time that we unwind now Woo! with a little bit of party, rapid fire. Party, <laughs> party, rapid fire, party. rapid fire. It's a rapid fire party, yes. Uh, <laughs> hashtag. Well, we got to get that hashtag. Vera, do you know how rapid fire works? Yes, I do. Okay, so let's get right to it. All right, rapid fire question number one. Your favorite color? Blue. Mm. Blue, eh? If I was green, I would die. Next. <laughs> Yeah, this is why rapid fire never goes rapidly because I always interject uh, with because I, I like, like to play blue. too. Hmm, interesting. You know? Why? <laughs> I like gray. Oh, I like gray, and not why just you're because of the gray. Well, oh. there you go. It's it's more of a grayish blue. So right. I've incorporated uh, you uh, both of our favorite colors. Gray. So uh, beer or wine? Wine, a thousand percent. <laughs> I want you to think about this for a moment. Okay. Hold on a second. Wine. Because <laughs> why not? Exactly. <laughs> What's your favorite wine? Type of one. Oh, Cabernet, definitely. California. California love yes. with Cabernet. Yes. Very nice. And Badger or Fox? Uh, <laughs> There's only one correct answer, you know I should say. You know what? I would like to say Badger, but I'm partial to Fox because I grew up in northern Ontario and actually had a pet fox. Oh, yeah. So, you had a pet what? fox? Yes. You oh got to tell us a little goodness. bit more about how you got a pet fox. Well, my father had this wood pile and I saw that there was a fox in the wintertime that was actually sleeping on it. And I kind of took pity on it because it looked so scrawny in the wintertime. So oh. I would leave some dog food out for it. And then eventually it started to wait by the house. And then it waited for me after school. And I went outside and started to become my friend. And then... Aww. Come summertime, it took off, but I had a pet Definitely. fox at one time. Huh. Well, the humble badger was jealous, but that pet fox, though. <laughs> no, the yo. pet fox, it's a good... I'll give her a ding for that. <laughs> Thank you. I feel it, so bad. How many people do you know that have a pet fox? Nobody. That's, uh, that's something. That's it. Uh, Vera, city or countryside? Countryside. Okay. Any particular reason why or... Because I'm from a small town and I was really kind of freaked out when I moved to Toronto because... Mm. I started my education at U of T and I was 18 years old at the time. So mm. imagine I'm moving from Northern Ontario to downtown Toronto, not knowing anyone, not knowing the city, not knowing the pace of the city. Mm. Everybody's talking fast, driving fast, moving fast, fast paced city. So it was really hard for me to adjust. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, um, you are from a small town, Thunder Bay. And so based on that, your trivia topic are you ready for is thunder? Dun -dun. Dun -dun. <laughs> <laughs> You're ready for uh, the trivia topic. And if for, of course, for our regular listeners, you know that this isn't about what we know and what we don't know. It's a chance for all of us to learn something together. Vera, are you set? I'm set. Okay, your first question. The name of the Norse god of thunder. I could not answer that. <laughs> <laughs> Does my co-host know maybe? Uh, that's the one for our crack team. Uh, sorry, what kind of team is it that we utilize? It's a in crack our research? research team. Yeah, they yeah. take a lot of crack. <laughs> take it over there. Okay. Well, no. It's, <laughs> the answer we're looking for is Thor. Oh, Thor, played of course by Chris Hemsworth. I should have just mm, asked you yes. uh, the Norse god of Chris Hemsworth. Maybe that yes, would have been. Yes, <laughs> that could have tickled your fancy oh, again. Um, in what city <laughs> is the NBA Thunder team located? I don't know because I don't watch sports. You don't watch sports at all. <laughs> no. Okay. Want to take a guess? I just watch when there's tight ends, like <laughs> on the Super Bowl. That's what I meant. Yeah. Once again, it's Badger After Dark. We always seem to go there. Yeah. That's no problem. We, the answer we're looking for is Oklahoma City. And your final question, this might be more up your alley. We're going into um, music. 
The lead single from the 1990 album The Razor's Edge by Australian hard rock band ACDC. What is it called? Thunderstruck. That's Woo! right. He gets the dings. <laughs> <laughs> so, yes, um, Vera, thank you uh, very much uh, for coming on to the Humble Badger podcast. It has been an absolute pleasure to have you on the show. And not just because you brought us fabulous gifts, uh, but because you are a fabulous uh, and entertaining <laughs> person so thank you very much for coming on thank you absolutely and you know i love everything that you've said innovation creativity even the fact that you are such a creative artist keep doing what you're doing how can people you. find you like are you insta famous can, instagram they can find me on instagram under vieras miyuski i know it's the world's hardest last name to spell but please just check the humblebadger.com <laughs> yes you can visit the humblebadger.com <laughs> You could, we will tag her on all uh, of our posts. So yes, definitely check her out. And on that note, I also want to thank our co-host for today, Melissa Moniz. Hey. Thank you, Melissa. You can follow her at Melissa Moniz International. And shout out to our promotional partners at the Studio Paint Bar. For uh, more information, you can visit thestudiopaintbar.ca. They have a whole wide range of events, and it is a premium paint venue located in the heart of Port Credit. For any inquiries from anyone about our program, please visit thehumblebadger.com for contact information or send us a message through social media. I want to thank our crew and thank you for tuning in. Signing off from the set here at Tracks Ahead Studio, my name is Pablo Dawson. Wherever you are and whatever you do, remember to follow your passion. Thank you for tuning in to the Humble Badger podcast. For more information, please visit thehumblebadger.com. The Humble Badger podcast is produced by the Pablo Dawson Company. Context matters. See you next time.